For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamene. Joining me today is Action SA leader Herman Mashaba, here to unpack recent developments in the country, Action SA's upcoming anniversary, and coalitions ahead of the 2024 elections. In recent months, uh, Johannesburg has been hit by some tragic events. But this week, uh, we've seen more than 70 people, and I'm told 12 of them are children. They've died because they were occupying a, a hijacked building, again, in the job CBD. And while you were a job mayor in 2017, uh, seven people also died in a hijacked building. You were trying uh, to solve this issue and many people were calling you xenophobic. As it turned out that uh, many of these hijacked buildings are occupied by illegal uh, immigrants. Why do you think uh, it has become a difficult issue for our government to solve this issue? Well, I think it's uh, becoming uh, difficult for our government because they have no uh, political will to deal uh, with uh, criminal matters because uh, some of our senior politicians are beneficiaries of criminal activities. Uh, It is for that reason that uh, crime has spiraled out of control in all aspects of our lives. be hijacked to the buildings, uh, be the Zama Zamas, uh, be the Pala Pala. So, I mean, uh, 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 Meda Capital Rape. So, I think, uh, unfortunately, as far as uh, my own judgment is concerned, it's that uh, we are governed by a political um, enterprise masquerading as a political party. Until such time that we as South Africans are going to uh, accept uh, that uh, we need to get this government out of power. We have a democratic responsibility, obligation, uh, and opportunity uh, come 2024 to remove this uh, criminals. Otherwise, uh, we're going to go down with them. Why do you think uh, these NGOs are a deterrent in solving this issue? You know, I've always actually called uh, some of them uh, so-called human rights uh, lawyers. I cannot understand how anyone can call yourself a human rights lawyer and allow people to live uh, under the conditions uh, in the inner city in these hijacked buildings. Like right now, just come back uh, from uh, from uh, the inner city and with the building opposite uh, the, the the one that uh, just been uh, down. We went in there as with one of uh, the, the media houses. You know, I'm, I'm still smelling right now. It looks like I've got to really go and have a shower. But you really look at uh, people living under these conditions. And actually, one of my colleagues was saying to try and get these people out and allow the private sector to um, refurbish this place. They will be the first ones uh, to say, no, you cannot uh, 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 remove them. And actually make it difficult for you that... Um, you, you've got to, uh, to find them accommodation, if I'm not wrong, wrong something like what, a 10 kilometer radius from where, where they are currently residing. Uh, and you can imagine for a city like Johannesburg, in fact, the, the country, we, we don't have the balance sheet and the luxury after all this many years of ASC management. So basically, they're making it difficult. They want um, people to live under these uh, dangerous, uh, um, deplorable conditions, and uh, we must leave them alone. So what do they gain out of this? Obviously, I don't really have any proof, but I don't think they're doing them out of um, the love or you, the respect for human rights. Because if you expect, um, if you love and respect human rights, there's just no way that you uh, let human beings live under these conditions. More especially in in, in our case, uh, and and the with the project we I embarked upon as a uh, inner city rejuvenation is that. Uh, while we were given these properties to the private sector, we wanted uh, employment opportunities uh, to be given a first preference to the people who were residing in, in these uh, properties. And uh, obviously, one of the conditions was that thirty um, percent of the of the rooms uh, um, the, or apartments. Uh, uh, must uh, t- uh, t- be made available to people paying between a thousand and uh, one thousand five hundred rands a month because some of these people live in those conditions just for a bed. That's what you pay with no services whatsoever. 
But um, unfortunately, uh, some of these NGOs and so-called human rights lawyers would not allow you to do that. But I find it really very strange why our national government and parliament in particular are not passing laws uh, that can uh, declare uh, property hijacking and destruction of our property as high treason so that people can save uh, 25 years uh, with no chance of um, parole and hard labor so that people can understand that uh, you, uh, you you go around hijacking people's properties, uh, there'll be a price to pay. So I think uh, and it looks like our parliamentarians um, uh, don't want to fall foul to the laws that they're passing. So that's why they're happy to uh, to live under a country with uh, almost complete lawlessness. And what is your take now on what we've heard that uh, the latest developments that are uh, Gauteng uh, Premier Banya Zali Sufi is working on instituting an inquiry uh, following the Marshalltown uh, building? What, what, what inquiry? What, what, do do, what does he need inquiry for? I mean, honestly, you don't. No one needs to really go and spend it. Quite. Just ask uh, the city of Johannesburg uh, if 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 the 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 uh, the province does not have. We'll ask uh, them to really give them records of um, hijacked buildings during my tenure if they've not really destroyed those uh, the, those forms. You know, in fact, just go around. Let them go around uh, the buildings around uh, the, the the one that's already been. Then you will realize that he does not need an inquiry. He needs uh, a plan uh, to revitalize the city and uh, and uh, bring back the rule of law. I think uh, to instituting an inquiry it's it's another madness of uh, the, the the premier with this. Uh, um, Nazi Spani and uh, all these things that uh, we're giving free licenses, driver's licenses to people. You know, I think, unfortunately, our premier is uh, one of those delusional uh, South Africans. This city, um, he's been in this city since 1994. This city um, got destroyed under their watch. So it's not something new. They are the ones instrumental in the destruction of the city. And on another issue, Mr. Mashaba, now we've seen your party entering into a multi-party charter with the Democratic Alliance. Apart from unseating the ANC, what prompted you to join uh, the multi-party coalition? And are you positive about the outcomes uh, from the recently uh, held conference? You know, uh, coalition arrangement is not something that uh, political parties work towards. When you're a political party anywhere in the world, uh, you work towards uh, getting outright majority. But for you to go into a coalition, uh, you respect the outcome of a democratic process. If you believe uh, the elections uh, were run free and fair, you, re- you, are, you accept the outcome. And therefore, in South Africa, it is clear that South Africa has entered an era of uh, coalitions. And anyone who's going to reject uh, uh, to go into a coalition, that basically means there's a, these are the people who are in politics because they're just looking for, for work. For us as Section SA, we're in, gov- we're in politics so that uh, we can remove the NC and be in government. And it is for that reason we're trying to get other part like-minded parties to join us to remove the ANC and bring in a new era in South Africa of politics where we can have an uh, accountable government. Am I positive uh, about this? It's a huge challenge. Coalitions are a challenge all over the world. And uh, and as you can see in in our case, uh, the DA is making it uh, really very difficult for us uh, to uh, attain majority. I mean, the city of Johannesburg, as, as an example, we, it, um, we've we just really signed with them the charter. We committed to do everything in our power to ensure that uh, we can get as many parties as possible, bringing the numbers uh, to us. And uh, a week later, we had um, a PA willing to, after we approached them, with the permission of, with the mandate from the DA, and all of a sudden the DA um, refuses. We'll keep trying. We're not going to give up because what options do we have? And now congratulations on your party celebrating at three years as the sixth biggest party in our country. This must be a huge milestone for you, Mr. Mashaba, as the founder of the party. 
Well, uh, Sani, this is the, really the beginning. We contested local government elections uh, as you know, in 2021, where we, we, we really changed the political landscape in South Africa. Now we've got all nine provinces covered with provincial leadership. We've just um, celebrated three years of our, uh, of our existence. And in two weeks' time, we're going into our inaugural policy conference, which is also be going to be another historic event. And what really inspires us as South Africans, if you look at our electoral support, um, no single party in the in South Africa, history of South Africa, where a political party received the electoral, almost electoral support from all communities. So where to be in Sentin, in Alexander, and so forth. No party has ever received such electoral support. So when we made um, that clear as part of our one of our core values of uh, creating a non-racial South Africa and uh, put together a team of non-racial South Africans, I think uh, we are living to that and um, we are glad that the voters are also responding positively to really embrace our message. And how are party preparations for the 2024 elections are progressing? Well, uh, that's a reason why we're having uh, this three-day uh, policy conference from the 12th to the 14th. And uh, from there, then we're ready. Uh, we just wait. We'll wait for the president uh, to announce the date. As I'm saying, I'm talking to you right now. There are branch, action SA branches opening all over the country. I'm sure you, you do follow us on social media platforms. As I'm talking to you, there are branches opening ev everywhere in, 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 in the country, be in the villages, in the townships, in the suburbs and, and everywhere. So yeah, we confident of emerging, uh, as a, a serious uh, player. We, we, we're going for a kill. Uh, we're going uh, to, to, to emerge uh, as the party to form a government either on our own or with other uh, political parties sharing the same values as us. And your party's highest uh, decision-making body has rejected your proposal, Mr. Mashaba. The level, uh, high levels of crime, I don't believe we can solve uh, South Africa's problems uh, without uh, actually bringing back the the, the, um, the death penalty. But we then went on a four-day strat session. Our legal team proved that we learned in reasonable doubt, presented... Uh, an alternative to the death penalty. And I think what motivated me to really accept their proposal is the fact that they are saying, hey, man, look, if we bring back the death penalty, unfortunately, people who will really be the biggest victims would be the poor people who are not going to have uh, proper legal uh, uh, counsel. So therefore, we'll end up only killing poor people. Yes, the, they would have found them guilty, but what about uh, the real criminals who've got the resources? We then obviously compromise to say, what would really be a real deterrent? We all agreed that under Action SA, and we're going to be presenting this at our policy conference, when you get a life sen sentence, it's going to be life sentence, hard labor, no chance of patrol. So uh, so when you say it's a life sentence, you're going to die in prison like a uh, best day. The under action SA, uh, Tabo Best is going to die in prison. He's not going to get, he's not going to see the, the, the outside of the prison for as long as he's alive. And that's really, for me, was a compromise that would also really deter people from committing crime under the current ANC government, where it looks like it, 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 uh, it, it, ANC incentivizes people to really be criminals. We are not going to have a, um, the criminals be like um, a drive through no ways under Action SA. So uh, I accepted it in good faith, uh, uh, and, and that, I'm happy with the outcome. There was Action SA founder and leader, Hemin Mashaba, unpacking recent developments in the country, Action SA's upcoming anniversary, and coalitions ahead of the 2024 elections.